Anyone open up to the one through eight? We'll start with that. Anyone got it up? Kind of gonna try to get it. First one to get there gets a high five. <laughs> That's a race. Kind of wins that high five. Luke, one eight. Yep. What? No, 18, one through eight. Oh, got it. 18. <laughs> Still had it. <laughs> okay. Wait, 18, one through eight? Yeah. I did not have it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jasmine. 18, one through eight. One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they would, they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who neither feared God nor cared about people. A widow of that city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. The judge ignored her for a while, but finally he said to himself, I don't fear God or care about people, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant request. Then the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Alright, so a little bit in there. Basically, the big point of that is God is going to provide justice. Um, he's a just God. Um, I won't get into the fact that he's just yet merciful. That's a whole other day of <coughs> lessening. But Which God is, is just. He will. He, he knows what is right. Obviously, what is right to him is right all around. So he will ensure that what is right, what is just, will be ensured. And uh, like I said, even this this judge, um, even though he, he was unjust, he was just, um, and maybe for the wrong reasons, but even so, he, if he can be just, don't you think that God's going to be just? Plans for you. So the next, I'm going to go out of Luke 9 through 17. Or 18, 9 through 17, I guess. See, this is why I'm <laughs> first time. Are you ready, Connor? Yeah. 9 through 17. 9 through 17. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and looked down on everyone else. Two men went up to the temple complex to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee took his stand and was praying like this, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, greedy, unrighteous, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I get a tenth of everything I get. The tax collector standing far off would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but keep striking his chest and saying, God, turn your wrath all right, I'm gonna stop you. All right, picture this: we got Connor. Connor's over here. He's like, oh God, I'm your faithful servant. I I do taxes or not tax. I give to you every day. I do this every day. This left and right. And we go over here. Devin's over here in the shadow corner. He's on his knees. Um, face his face is in his hands, and he's crying and he's just talking to God. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just want to put that in, into uh, perspective for you. So, Connor, go ahead with that. I tell you, this one went down to his house justified rather than the other. Because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Uh, Oh, you, yeah, I guess you can stop there. Um, so basically, like I said, the one who exhausts himself, 
himself will be humbled, but he who humbles himself will be exalted. Now, if you think of worldly exaltation and godly exaltation, I don't want godly ex exaltation because that's just so much more. There's there's just so much more to that. God is so much greater than this what anything this world has to offer. So for me, I'm, I'm, I want to be this guy over here in the corner, humble, just humbling myself before God. Devin thinks he's a lot of hot stuff now because I use him as a reference. You come to the future. <laughs> <laughs> People were also bringing babies to Jesus for him to place his hands on them. When the disciples saw this, they rebuked them. But Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like like a little child will never enter. Alright, so the main point of this, children are important. Whether, whether you realize or not, God, Jesus, sees a child as greater than us because they are the next generation. We we are to bring them up to the church. If we don't take care of the children, then the church will not be continued. So they they are considered the greatest in God's eyes. And it says, uh, "Verily I say unto you, whoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child." shall in no wise enter therein. So you gotta have a mind of a child. Let me ask you, think of like a child here. I'm gonna ask you guys a question. How do you, how do you get an elephant into a fridge? How, how do you do that? Get a big fridge. Put peanuts in there. No. <laughs> think of like a child. Well, you could say you don't, or you could make it smaller like Legos and cut it up. No. no. <laughs> That's what I said. Well, what, what's your grown up answer that you got from <laughs> what, what, uh, All of these things, you guys are thinking too much. If you want an elephant to go in the fridge, open the door for it. I just said put him in there. <laughs> but you just open the door and let him in. A kid can't put an elephant in a fridge. Right. Mm -hmm. So depends on if it's a baby you, elephant. You can't think about it too much. You just gotta do it. Um, that's the big thing under that part. Um, so next is 18 through 30. This is a fairly common passage. I'm sure most of you know it. We'll just go over it anyway. <laughs> Are you? You have it? I do have it. Yes. Oh, you were ready. Yeah. What did you, you say it was? 18 through 30. Oh. It was still in Luke 18? Yes, yeah, still Luke 18. Okay. Are you going to read? I can read, yes. Oh, I thought oh. you were going to. I will. Uh, <laughs> all right. Now a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. Right, just, just, we'll put that out. No one is good but God. Just think about that as he continues with it. No one is good but God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and, mo and your mother. And he said, All these things I have kept from my youth. So when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, You still lack one thing. Sell all that you have and distribute to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But when he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he became very sorrowful, he said, How hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And those who heard it said, Who then can be saved? But he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Then Peter said, See, we have left 
all and followed you. So he said to them, Assuredly, I say unto you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life. All right, so beginning of that, the uh, man, he said, I have kept you since my youth. I have followed all these commandments, all this stuff. And so when I'm reading that, I think of myself. I think of someone like Connor or Seth. We, we grew up in the church. We grew up knowing who God was. We grew up with an understanding of the Bible. But there's more than just that. There's more than just knowing. There's more than just following those commandments.